My out-of-studio partner for today's program is Mike Gendron. Mike, welcome back. Uh, It's good to be back with you, Tom. We are in the book of Romans, just about to chapter 16, but we're going to finish up chapter 15 with verse 31. That I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. So, Mike, could you give us a little background as to what the Apostle Paul was doing here? Yeah, Paul is talking about his trip to Jerusalem, and he's beseeching the saints to pray for him because he recognizes that he's going to be involved in direct opposition from the Jews in Jerusalem that hate him. They hate him because he's a minister of grace to the Gentiles. And so he's asking for spiritual protection, for spiritual empowerment. And secondly, there's a natural disinclination on the part of Jewish Christians and their pride to accept the gift that he's bringing from the Gentile Christians. And so he's asking for prayer that they would receive the gift and that they would be humbled by it and not be so prideful of them being Jewish Christians. And Mike, this really speaks of volumes, I think, to us. You know, just going back, Paul mentioned in earlier verses, verse 24, and then again in 28, that he had it on his heart to visit Spain, and he was going to go to Rome, stop in at Rome, and all these people that he had written to, and a number of, we're going to get that to that in 16, those who he knew there. In other words, he had an idea of what he wanted to do But Paul (laughs) would always defer to what the Lord wanted. And somehow I don't think that although he recognized that he was going to have problems in Jerusalem, not only with regard to maybe the, the gift that he was bringing, but that was a light problem. What he didn't expect, I don't think, was how this was going to affect how he would get to Rome And as we mentioned last week, I don't think Spain ever entered into the picture after he ended up in Rome. Well, that's true. And I I think, how does this apply to the saints today and the different churches? And I just really sense from reading this, it's not only a very personal letter that Paul is writing, but it really shows his great love for the saints and shows a little bit of the intimacy that he has with them, as we're going to see in chapter 16. But I, I noticed, too, that Paul models for us that he is asking for prayer that he would come unto you through the will of God. We always want to be conformed to the will of God. We always want to be in prayer searching for the will of God, where to go, what to do, what path to take. And so Paul is a good example of that, that unless we are in prayer and asking the Lord for direction in our lives, then we may wander outside the will of God. I also like the fact that Paul realizes that he can be refreshed through fellowship with the saints. And so it's like getting your spiritual batteries recharged. Occasionally we have to have that sweet fellowship of the saints for encouragement and for exhortation and to be recharged for the Mm -hmm. journey ahead. And Mike, about the journey ahead, this is what I believe many believers today can get out of this section of Romans, and that is... Again, we may make our plans, but bottom line, as you inferred, Mike, we need God's will. We don't know the way things are going to go. We don't know what's going to come out of left field or how there may be uh, opposition to what we're doing or just the circumstances uh, prevent us from doing what we think God would have us do. But God's in charge. He's sovereign. He knows Absolutely. He knows he's the Alpha and the Omega. He knows the beginning from the end. So we have to continually keep looking to him and looking for his will to be done. And then his Holy Spirit will enable us as we're kind of thrown, at least in our own minds, a curve here or there's some opposition there. God knows those ahead of times. He knows what we need to do and how we need to proceed. Certainly, Paul didn't expect to be arrested <laughs> All right, and then taken to Rome as basically a captive of the Roman government and then be there in prison 
in Rome, even though some of his incarceration was not as bad as another part of his incarceration. But nevertheless, he did not expect this. I don't believe. I don't think the scriptures indicate, at least what we're reading here. He wanted to go to Spain and he was going to stop by in Rome. But nevertheless, God got him to Rome and used him mightily there even though he didn't expect the way it was going to take place, that he would be shipwrecked and so on. And yet all these things, you know, Mike, I find it really encouraging that as we see Paul's life unfold and his ministering of the gospel, these things are for us to learn by. Mike, you know, thinking about in Corinthians and 1 Corinthians 10 to 11, it talks about how all these things happened unto them, talking about the Old Testament saints. And we can look back on their lives, how it says that, that they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So all these things that we find in the scripture, even the things that maybe we don't today see application. Certainly, as we continue to go through the Word of God, we're going to find things that will minister to us, that will teach us. And again, whether they be the experiences of Paul or any of the saints found in Scripture, they are written for our learning that we might, again, be more effective in our own ministries. Yeah, Tom, I I really relate to the Apostle Paul in a very small degree, but when he talks about the refreshment that he receives when he fellowships with the saints, you and I both travel a lot to minister the gospel in different parts of the country and the world, and there's nothing more refreshing for me than to go into a new body of believers that I've never met before and to have that kindred spirit. It's almost like we've known each other for a long period of time, the sweet fellowship of the saints. They're so encouraging to us when we travel. And oftentimes we receive persecution, as Paul is referring to here. And sometimes the persecution, Tom, comes from Bible-believing churches that have compromised the gospel and they're embracing Roman Catholicism, and so they really have a problem with our ministry. And so there's a remnant of God's people out there that are contending earnestly for the faith, that they're interested in reaching the lost, and they really share the vision that we have in our ministry And we love the refreshment that we get when we minister to them and with them. I agree, Mike. How could we have this other than there be, you know, this bond of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit. When somebody becomes a believer, they're indwelled with the Holy Spirit. They are a child of God. And that, (laughs) you're really going to be with family. And I'm not saying that everybody, you know, throughout Christendom lives up to that because there are professing and not true Christians. And there are those who are maybe not walking with the Lord as they should. But nevertheless, I find over and over again, when I go to a place to speak and and have the fellowship of people that I just met just at that time, it's like I'm back with family, right, Mike? That's right. And if I could just share a personal application. It's just harder and harder for us to get into different churches around the country because we're taking such a strong stand for the defense of the gospel against the ecumenical movement empowered by the Catholic Church. So we're actually headed up to Buffalo, New York in a couple of weeks, and there was not one church there that would open their doors. So there was a group of 25 saints that got together and pooled their resources and are renting a hotel room and flying us up so that we can equip them to reach out to the Roman Catholic community in that city. And this is refreshing to know that there's a remnant of God's people there that see the differences between the biblical gospel and the gospel of Roman Catholicism. They desperately want to see their loved ones saved from the snare of the devil. And so they're inviting us up and they're pooling their resources. It's very refreshing and very encouraging to us. Mm -hmm. I agree, Mike. Now we're going to get into chapter 16. And Mike, throughout chapter 16, this is Paul's salutation to many of the saints there. And although somebody say, well, come on, it's just it's like the genealogies. You know, I don't see any value in it. I think there's much value. Certainly, specifically, it was meant for that time and these particular individuals. But I still think we can learn from this, Mike. Picking up with verse 1, I commend you to Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centuria, that ye receive her in the Lord as become saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she has been a help of many and of myself also. 
Mike, this is very much like what you were just talking about, that you go to a certain place and the saints there, not only do they invite you there, but they greet you and and they bless you because you're there to bless them. I think this is the same way with Phoebe, that she went to this place and Paul is saying, hey, she's such a help to me. She's such a help to the church. Bless her and help her out for what she's doing. Yeah, it really is a reflection of Paul's heart here. There's such an outpouring of his love toward the saints that have helped him and often been persecuted on account of Paul and his missions. And so we really see Paul just pouring out his love and embracing the saints. Verse 3, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. You know, Mike... We're given so many examples from the saints recognized in the scriptures, and this is how we ought to pattern our life. These are things that ought to encourage and bless us and say, hey, when I read Priscilla and Aquila, I think about Mike, about you and Jane going out and ministering and how you are co-workers with Christ in these things. And I just think that's wonderful. You know, these are great encouragements to all of us, I believe. They really are. Verse 5, likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruits of Archaea unto Christ. Again, these are believers who not only are opening their homes and bringing a fellowship within that place to encourage one another in the Lord and to learn and to grow in as they as they study the scriptures together. Verse six Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Again, this is such an encouragement from the scriptures of those saints who are really laboring for the glory of God and for the further promotion of the gospel, which is the only way anybody can be saved, through the gospel of God, the gospel of Christ. And Paul even called it his gospel, which he received from Jesus Christ. And Tom, you know, it's interesting, too, as Paul is naming all these people who labored for him and who were persecuted on behalf of the gospel— I know your ministry and our ministry get a lot of letters from the saints in the field, and it is always so encouraging when we receive letters and we hear how they have taken the resources that we have left behind and they've used them, used the Word of God to bring others into the church. And so I think what we see is a little bit of that here with Paul is naming all these people who labored for the gospel. Well, again, it should be an encouragement to all out there that there are many saints who have taken to heart God's word and God's truth and and are putting it to effect in their lives and blessing many others by it. Please visit our website, thebereancall.org, to access our radio archives going back to 1999 and our newsletter going back to 1986. We offer daily updates by email or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking for information about a specific topic? Go to thebereancall.org and click on Topics at the top of the page. Our online store is thebereancall.com. We offer a wide variety of books, tracks, CDs, and DVDs. Note that most of our e-books are free. I'm Gary Carmichael. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you can join us again next week. Until then, we encourage you to search the Scriptures 24-7. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back.